So, another video in January 1860. Why, you may ask. Well, I passed turn, and Austria has declared war on us. <laughs> so, yeah, I mentioned in the last video, we did have some anxiety about the kind of impulsiveness of Vienna. They were engaging in various kinds of expeditions. They, of course, had been successfully occupy northern Italy, or Piedmont, Sardinia, and sought some revenge. They've occupied central Italy. Romania and they maintain their position in Montenegro and it looks like their kind of declining status their, their sort of sinking prestige the way that's being dealt with really is to kind of follow some of the hardliners and to act increasingly impulsively aggressively and of course Austria still had a, a very good large standing army which has been increased significantly as far as we know in terms of the total num number of men under arms they actually have a force about four times the size of ours now to be clear they had a force similar to that, actually, when we occupied Vienna. But a lot of that accounts for kind of garrison forces and this kind of thing, or we think anyway. I don't know to what extent they've actually increased the size of their kind of field command, you know, these units that can move around and engage in combat. We have a fairly substantial field command, but we don't have lots of garrison forces. We've got kind of garrisons focused in sort of certain areas. So anyway, we're at war with Austria again, um, our old adversary. Austria this time... You know, they've recovered from their position. They have a national morale of 150, probably on the back of successful military expeditions. So they are absolutely bent on recovering their position as a preeminent first-rate great power. A, uh, you know, a position which we, arguably we played a key part in taking from them when we occupied central Hungary, Vienna, and devastated their heartland. Our army is in a much better shape than it was at the beginning of the last war. It's somewhat larger. Um... It's qualitatively better also, but this war is going to be different. The, the front is much broader. They occupy Romania. They continue to occupy Montenegro, so they can move into Bulgaria from this position here. Um, or, of course, they can move into Greece, you know, southern Serbia from Montenegro. And the Zvorna Gap is kind of no more, really, and that leaves Bosnia in a much more vulnerable position. In Sarajevo, we still have the Free Hungary Corps, uh, which is holding uh, a defensive position uh, in the garrison there and we'll maintain that force there we can't really move into Romania legally uh, legally this is still occupied Romanian territory it's not a part of Austria the Austrian Empire as such if we do that we can engage Austrian forces there but we have to legally immediately withdraw and those areas become Romanian again and of course we'll to be occupied by the Austrians again it's a complicated situation um, but yeah kind of there's kind of lingering legal questions about what we can do here. Now, sure enough, we could declare war on Romania in order to give us full transit rights. We could therefore occupy Romanian territory and even press our own claims on Romania. Those claims are really going to be financial in character. We would force them to kind of uh, commit to some sort of reparations or something. We don't have any territorial claims on Romania. So that's an option. But if we do that, it places a bit of pressure on our relations with other countries like Russia, for example. Uh, Britain, France, one thing we have going for us is it's that we have, that have been attacked here. We haven't attacked Austria, and therefore we have a bit of goodwill from other powers. And we might seek to preserve that by maintaining the status quo in Romania, uh, maybe trying to force at least uh, Austrian forces out of Montenegro. Um, but yeah, it's a funny situation we find ourselves in. First off, we need to kind of prepare our field command then for action. So we've got the European Army Theatre under Hussein Avenue. We're going to give Namik Pasha. He's a new two-star general, of course, uh, who joined us fairly recently. He's going to be given command of the Imperial Guard Corps. Um, Hussein Avenue is not activated uh, for the moment. Um, in Adrianople, of course, then we have um, the famous Omar Pasha. Uh, we're going to give Mehmed, uh, Mehmed Ali Pasha command of the Imperial Guard. He's a new two-star general. We've got another two-star general we're going to give in command of an army corps. And we have a three-star general at Spare. At some point, he's going to be given, be given command of a new army, which is being constructed. We've begun the construction of that army in... Um, let's get out of my pasture out of the fortress for the moment. So we've begun the construction of a new guard corps in Constantinople. Uh, that's going to form the basis for an additional field command, uh, but not yet. Um, it's going to take a bit of time. We've got Abdi Pasha not activated in Ankara. 
Now, the weather's pretty rough. It's off-season. If he's going to march to Adrian Open, it's going to take him 62 days. I don't think that's on the card. So to that end, what we're going to do is to break the various components of his force down. Uh, we don't have enough transport points to move that by rail. That's a surprise. Okay. We can't even move an army corps yet. What can we move by rail, I wonder? Uh, the cavalry division. I wonder if it's to do our, to, with our limited coal infantry. We can't move very much at the moment by rail. I wonder why that is. Uh, we can move a cavalry division. Well, we can't move a force this size by rail yet. It might be to, for a number of reasons. It might actually also be to do with the weather. I don't know. Uh, but there's something that's kind of uh, putting pressure on the rail points. <coughs> I think, actually, I know what that might be. It may be because we just stopped conversion of military supplies. Or rather, we started conversion of military supplies. We stopped exporting military supplies, which means those supplies are converted on map. Um... 50% of your uh, remain unused, your supplies will move around the map more efficiently. Yeah, so it may be to do with uh, the sudden conversion of military supplies from our kind of um, stockpile is going to be stockpiled onto the map. We've just done that. So they might be putting pressure on rail points for the time being. Um, so a lot of our rail points are going to be taken up. We'll keep an eye on that. Our rail points are... Uh, that supplies rail here, rail movement port. We'll follow that closely, but we're going to have, anyway, we're going to have to get Abdi Pasha's army moving up towards Adrianople. It's going to take 60 days. We don't have an option to force march, unfortunately, but anyway. Um, and we've got Omar Pasha, who is activated. He's sort of always activated. Um, I think our first play with our activated command in Adrianople is we can see that there's an Austrian force in Moldova, or Moldavia. Uh... An army corps, no less. There's a reasonable force here. There's a good chance that force is going to move into uh, Constanta. Uh, so to that end, how long will it take him? 33 days, my god. The weather really is that bad, huh? Okay, maybe not. We do have a kind of broad plan. I think to begin with, we're going to try and counter any Russian move in Silistria, the coastline here. But ultimately our plan is to get Omar Pasha and Hussein Avni up towards kind of um, the Bosnian Eliad. We are going to try and move to liberate Montenegro, at least destroy Austrian forces there, but we'll have to withdraw immediately after that. But then we can look to secure the coastline at Kataro, no longer fortified, and to hold Split, Sarajevo, and then our line also we need to hold a force in Zvornik. Um, that's going to be the plan. So you might attach an army corps and place an army corps in this morning. Um, but that's going to be the idea with Omar Pasha in the centre at Sarajevo. That's going to be the opening play. The army that we're moving from Ankara, that's going to initially going to hold at Adrianople, then it's going to move up to Plevna. And the purpose of this army is to hold this line here to basically counter any kind of Austrian incursions um, south of... Um, South of the what? What river is this? Well, yeah, this is this is the Danube, isn't it? Yeah, south of the Danube. Um, so we're going to try and hold a defensive line on the Danube using one of our commands, moving two armies up. And ultimately, of course, we want to look to repeat something similar to what we did before, to hold victory locations, which is going to be Dalmatia, move north, maybe take Zagreb. We can see that there's an Austrian or a Hungarian core that's forming Zagreb. This is what might account for their large combat strength. They have a lot of army corps that have been constructed probably sort of dotted around the map like this um so they've in, you know they've invested a huge amount in kind of rebuilding their army and enlarging their army so um yeah so we're going to move the two armies hussein avni omar pasha ultimately going to take a position on the left in bosnia and then um abdi pasha's uh fourth army is going to hold a position at Plevna, whilst we begin construction of a fifth army in Constantinople. Abdul Karim Nadir is going to hold fast, hold tight in the east, actually, I think. Uh, we'll take him outside of the fortress, but he's going to hold a position in the east. And, um, yeah, for the time being, just basically hold tight. We are going to t detach uh, Mehmed Vasif Pasha. Uh, the reason being is uh, he's a two-star general. We can move him to the west somewhere. 
give him command of some sort of force. We'll move into Adrianople. 17 days, we'll obviously move by rail. And that's pretty much it in terms of our opening moves. Um, but yeah, no fancy kind of nonsense this time. No kind of, uh, no flavor video or anything like that, I don't think. We're just going to kind of, um, yeah, down to the grim business of the new decade. Uh, we are well placed to defend ourselves. And I get the impression this is going to be a hell of a fight. This might be a tougher fight, actually, than before. Because Austria really is kind of um, going balls to the wall on this. And yeah, it just looks like their foreign policy is to go absolutely ham, try and claw back some kind of prestige. So we're going to seek to counter that, you know. And they did really well against Piedmont Sardinia in the Second War. And bear in mind, they did that whilst having substantial forces dotted around here. So they, their entire army wasn't even devoted to that conflict. So yeah, it begins. That's sortie the fleet. Um, we get the fleet to take position at the base of the... Um, uh, of the Adriatic, I suppose. Um, and we've got the raiding fleet also. Now, there are no Austrians in either uh, Austrian, so there's no Austrian merchant shipping in either the Central Mediterranean or the Black Sea. Uh, on the, the Western approaches, however. They do have forces. How long would it take these boys to get to the western approaches? 28 days. Let's do it. Okay. That's pretty much it. That's our opening play. Um... Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of kind of seeing how the Austrian move develops, um, how what their opening play is like this time. The, the last war with us, they made quite a slow opening play. They've declared war off season, and there's some heavy weather scattered around the Balkans, snow and rain. So, yeah, we'll just see what happens, I suppose. Um, let's see, five days from there. Just going to see how long it takes. So Hussein Avi is a fast mover. Um, I wonder how long it take him to get to. 15 days. He's, a, he's in a defensive posture, but let's do that um, anyway. And he'll be in a position maybe to break a force off uh, to try and clear um, Montenegro. We could even try and break off a cavalry division to do that. Twenty-two days, or not? Not yet. Anyway, I think once we're in Zvornik, we'll break off a cavalry division, or maybe one, of, maybe the guard corps. And we'll try and clear the left, um, clear Montenegro, and um, yeah, I think that's all we can do for now. That is all we can do. How long would it take him to get to guards? Yeah, the weather's really tough around the centre here. Eleven days to Romania. Okay, let's do it. We'll set to an offensive posture just in case any Russian forces hurtle down here. I don't think they will. Uh, Russian, Austrian forces hurtle down here. I don't think they will. Um, but, yeah, we'll hold an offensive posture just in case. So we'll engage them sort of thing. Okay, 11 days to Romania. And then on the left, 15 days uh, to Zvornik. And it's going to take him, you know, 62 days. That's absolutely bonkers. Um, it's just because of the rain and the sort of uh, the, the quagmire, I suppose. But anyway, and the snow. That's it. That's our opening move then. Uh, yeah, with the uh, second Austro-Ottoman War, I'm going to put you on pause. I'm going to pass the turn, and I'll see you in early Feb. Okay, welcome back. Early February then, and uh, let's have a look at the, uh, the opening moves. Well, we'll look for our reports first of all. So we've just got a historical flavor event, gold rushing. Uh, looks like the. Um, Northwest United States, uh, cotton plantations, Alexandria, Agra, Barra have been discovered. Omani's pirates. Um, okay, we'll go from Oman. We can deal with that. Uh, we've kept this fleet in the Persian Gulf just to conduct uh, sort of shows of force 
to our colonial territories here. Uh, we're going to hold off for that for the time being. It's two, yeah, two days away. In terms of actions, then, uh, just sort of uh, colonial stuff, really, in Yemen, ongoing kind of conflict. So the cavalry division to try and clear out her Dida um, and engaged. It was successful. Um, but the Yemenis um, are staying there. Maybe they're set to evade combat now or something like this. But going to move this force back to Sana. What is that? Eight days. And we're going to start moving Zarif Pasha down to Taiz and look to lift the siege at um, Aden. So Omar Pasha is in Romelia. Looks like we've completed a section of Rao Line in Romelia also. Austrian forces sitting tight. A bit like the last war, their opening moves look slow. Um, Hussein Avenue is not activated. Let's attach the Imperial Guard. Okay, Namik Pasha is activated. We'll send him in to deal with um, uh, to deal with Montenegro. He'll have to instantly withdraw, I think. But the main thing is to kind of push that force north, get it cleared from our left, and he'll be supported by Hussein Avenue also. The railroad coal extraction has begun. It's our second coal extraction site in Niche. And once the railroad is complete, that'll increase our um, coal production fairly substantially. We completely understand how to harness the possibilities of four stroke engine. That's good. See, we've got so many now, it's uh, I'm not sure how feasible it is to actually see if we can hunt out for strike engine. You can kind of actually sort of narrow in a little bit, but I don't even know what category for strike engine It's probably industrial technologies. But uh, let's scroll down anyway, just have a quick sort of look at anything else that might interest us that we've kind of developed to go for strike engine. So that leads to two stroke Benz motor car sparking plugs. Early mass production of autos, motorized transport, tanks. Wow. Somewhere down the line. Okay. Right, we're importing quite a bit of coal at the moment just because we've actually set to pay a premium value. Just because there's a shortage on the global market, we want to build up our stockpile in case that shortage becomes any kind of worse. Uh, let's have a look at our economy. So, a lot of dyes. Tobacco, nitrates, interesting chemicals, uh, fruits and cereals. Domestic market sales are solid. Export 62 for 285. Happy with that. Let's uh, balance our trade. Yeah, that's all good. Let's check out assets balance. Fine. Nice recovery on state revenue there. Uh, we kind of needed that. <clears throat> hmm. So Amar Pasha is still activated. Um, okay, another 11 days to Varna. Let's do that and let's get him prepared to counter either move against Plevna or Constanta. Once we get Abdi Pasha in place, uh, Abdi Pasha will switch places with Omar. He'll move up and basically guard the frontier and we'll send Omar to the left. At the moment, Hussein Avni is out on his own. Um, but there's no sort of signs of, of any kind of imminent Austrian move or anything like that. Um, 
assortment uh, well Austria's kind of puppets of uh, declared war on us so Bavaria that's okay that's fine yeah so we need to basically take ourselves some victory locations Ooh, Montenegro, Bavaria, Morocco, and Spain. Austria continues to hold Montenegro, however, so it still is at war with them. Okay, that's fine. That's pretty much it. That's a turn in the bag. Um, let's set some of our manufacturing goods to export. Go for 20. Um, let's just check our reserve. We'll increase the reserve of the Imperial Guards uh, slightly. Uh, two manufactured goods, 32 conscripted companies. That's fine. And also fill that today. Okay. That's good. Okay, gonna put your pause past turn and we'll see you in late Feb. Okay, welcome back. Late February then, and uh yeah, the war is on. Um so let's have a look at the opening actions. Uh then well first of all there's a colonial engagement that had died there. This is the cavalry division. We've got that back into Sana now. And Zarif Pasha's army is slowly moving back south towards Taiz because we need to lift the siege on Aden. Um, yeah, the um, Yemeni force remains in position in her Daida. It's just, yeah, you know, the sort of ongoing mess that Yemen is. We're going to have to kind of not focus on that so much now. Um, first engagement, then first blood at Montenegro. Um, this is the Guard Corps under uh, Namik Pasha. Um, successful. Um, we essentially liberate Montenegro, but we have to withdraw from Montenegro. Uh, it kind of explains why. So, Montenegro is captured by us, but then because of tensions between our nation and Montenegro, uh, we're basically compelled to withdraw. If we don't, then it's an occupation of Montenegro, we declare war. So it kind of automatically does that, unless we declare war in Montenegro. We don't have, I don't think, a Cassius Banner against Montenegro. Let's have a look. Um, no, Russia's good. I mean, we don't have a Cassius Bally on anyone. These are the nations that have a Cassius Bally against us. So, yeah. Anyway, kind of job done. We engaged an Austrian force there. Fairly pointless here. It looks like it remains in position. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Um, Namik, uh, the guard corner, Namik Pasha, has fallen back into Sarajevo, and we have spotted an absolutely monumental. Austrian force moving south, it's captured Bihach, and it's presumably going to move south into Montenegro. Look at all these army corps. I mean, this has got to be a force that's three to four hundred thousand. So yeah, it looks like the Austrians really have built a massive army. <laughs> I think it's going to be a lot bigger than what it was, especially when you consider that and all the other forces that we can see. Um, yeah, we have got a hell of a fight in our hands, I think. Um, Austria fancies this one. And yeah, I guess my plan to kind of um, hobble Austria has kind of backfired. It was always going to be the case that unless we gave up um, Bosnia Herzegovina to Austria, we were always going to be at war with Austria. It was going to be like the 18th century on repeat, endless kind of Balkan conflicts. If we gave this up, we probably wouldn't have. Um, there wouldn't really be a. Well, we'd have a castle spell against Austria, I think, uh, but they wouldn't against us. Put it that way. Um, but yeah, we're not going to do that. We're going to see if we can fight, defend uh, Bosnia, and see if we can kind of stem the tide of what looks like the Austrian steamroller. So the other kind of move then is Vinfeld sent a core south, which is uh, besieging Constanta. Constanta is a new, modern, enlarged fortress with uh, garrison divisions plus additional forces. Um, so that's that's a fairly substantial force we've got defending there. 70,000, no gun emplacements, however, but um, that's now besieged. Omar um, Pasha's in place in Nirvana. He's set to an offensive posture, and he's going to look to counter that move. It's a 12-day march off-season. So that's going to be the first big battle, I suppose, unless Vinfant's force is designed to fall back, but this is an irritant, obviously. 
we would rather own my passion was now moving up towards Zvornik, frankly. Um, yeah, I think probably the guard call we're going to have to set to kind of um, evade combat and pull this force back. Uh, we'll set to kind of retreat if engaged. And that's going to rejoin Hussein Avenue and Zvornik. Um, because this is a huge, huge force. Um, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> They want they want Bosnia back, <laughs> or they want Bosnia, I should say. They've never had it, but uh, they want they want a second roll of the dice. Um, Forty three days until he gets the Adrian Abdul. Yeah, it's going to be a big fight. We might even have to start looking at bringing Abdul Karim. Um, yeah, we might have to start looking at bringing his force back to the European theatre. Let's have a look at Russia's dispositions on the border. It's defensive forces, really. That we can see for the time being, anyway. Russia's still busy in Sweden. Yeah, I think we might have to risk it. So there's a couple of things we're going to have to do. We're going to have to bring the main transport fleet back from Basra. Um, that's a long old journey as well because it's obviously around the Cape uh, so let's bring the transport fleet we'll set it to evade combat and to Smyrna 31 days Well, there's one turn left of the um, military uh, expedition. Um, and then I think we're going to um, move the Marine Brigade back to Basra. I mean, Omar Pasha could theoretically move. The worry is, what if he displaces from Bucharest or Moldavia into kind of Kronstadt, and then he's kind of trapped in Austrian territory? You'd have to conduct a march off-season across quite tough terrain. I'm not sure if that's on the cards, really. But um, yeah, right. One thing that we do need to do is to bring this. This is a bit of a daft move, as it turns out. Uh, this force is now. Completely disorganized, having sailed to the western approaches in a rough seas. We've got the main imperial fleet setting tight. I think we'll keep them there for the, the time being at the base of the Adriatic. And we'll sort of sortie up and down the Adriatic. Right, I think let's risk it. Let's remove the Eastern Frontier Force. We have got a really large fortress of cars, which buys us time. Um, so let's detach one of the Army Corps. We can start moving one of them at least. So it's a move on the rails. That's seven days. Okay, good. Ah, no. Okay, let's go again.
Okay. Okay, we've got him to evade combat and to retreat if engaged. That's fine. That's good enough for me. Um, a seven day march. That is a really big Austrian force, though. It's unbelievably large. I mean, it's not actually organized, but it, it can be organized by whatever commander this is if he moves into Sava. But yeah, that is huge. Look at all his army corps. <laughs> it's unbelievable. That's probably the size of our entire army, just that force there. Unbelievable. Okay, uh, let's check the economy real quick. Set conversion off. To a conversion on for supplies and munitions, conversion off for preserved foods. Okay, good. Can't stop looks good. Okay, very good. Um, so what were our exports then? Textiles, so we're buying steel, iron and coal. Let's just check out iron stuff part very quickly. Okay, good. So 140 national market sales for 442, 84 exports for 317, 46 imports for 112. Good round economically. Decent that. Okay, so Baden declares war on us in support of Austria. That's fine. That's an Austrian client state. We're just following orders. Okay, very good. Um, I think that's going to be pretty much our moves for this turn. Um, hang on, let's just check the fleet in the Persian Gulf. Didn't engage anything, did it? Now let's get these boys back in. Uh, Back into Basra. Okay, good stuff. Gonna put you on pause and we'll see you in early March. Alright, welcome back. Early March then. And uh, let's have a quick look at the reports. So Austria's granted a state subsidy on goods imports. Uh, so, first really sizable engagement of the war then against the core size Austrian force, largely destroy most of the force actually. Uh, was a resounding victory. Um, surprisingly, Vinfen didn't come to their aid, maybe because of the river crossing or because of the weather, but uh, his force has been reinforced. Um, so we're going to be looking at another engagement at Constanza, I think, in the very near future. Um, yeah, they're beginning to build a force up here again, for a move against kind of Sanistria. Uh, we've got the army call in strategically redeployed. From the east into Adrianople. We're going to do that with an additional army corps now. Okay. okay, excellent. And then much of the remainder of the army will try and transport across the Black Sea, or indeed use more rail, rail transport points. But, um, yeah. 
army from Constantinople being constructed. And in the west, nothing yet. No sign of that uh, huge force in Bihach. Maybe they're trying to kind of tempt us to move north. We'll hold position here for the time being, I think. Um, yeah, it's just because the Austrian force is so large there that we need to really hold position and await for reinforcements. 22 days away, Abdi Pasha then, force march, 70% chances do that. No contact by the main fleet. Let's get the main fleet back to Constantinople. Play a gumbo diplomacy on Q8, see if we can drive up colonial penetration there. What is it, 43? So annoying, it's just not enough. 48 in Dubai, 39, 44. We'll sit tight and taze for the time being, recover our force. We've got a cavalry division covering Sana. Again, they're everywhere, they're swarming us. Mm -mm. Enemies routed at Dabruja. We might have destroyed that army corps actually, but that won't be enough. There's plenty more where that came from. Okay, time to bring you boys home, I think. We'll get them to Basra. We'll keep the kind of uh, marine brigade there for the time being. Um, and we'll just use kind of uh, riverine points. Okay, that's a sizable round economically. 20 manufactured goods exported, 10 units of textiles, lots of dyes, tobacco, 15 fish. That's a lot of exports. Domestic market sales 114 for 453. Exports 101 for 429. My god, yeah, and a private capital sitting at 2000. And um, imports 56 for 132. That's a really good round economically. Minimal disruption economically from the war so far, then. I think you know, we're now in a position to kind of extend our line down to Van. Yep, that's good. Um, let's check our exports then. Uh, we'll keep the options open for 20 exports, I think, on um, on manufactured goods, because that was a really good round. Starting to shift more dyes than we actually uh, could produce. Good. I mean, we exported all that, but it doesn't feel like, you know... That's put us in any kind of really difficult position with the single exception of dyes. It's, we're eating through our kind of dye stockpile now. Um, let's check assets balance. Yeah, it's all good. Demands are met. Supply stockpile looks good. Okay, happy with all that.
yeah, it's just a case of kind of frustrating me sitting tight, getting our forces assembled. Um, what do we do here? Oh, hang on. There's a massive Russian army that's appeared in Bassarabia. Are things about to get decidedly dicey, I'm wondering? Mm. Okay, let's set Omar Pasha to defend and retreat to fall back to Varna. 13 days. That's the safest move, I think. We'll even set him to evade combat. Retreat if engaged. There we go. Yeah, Russia might fancy. This might be a kind of uh, the deluge that we've been waiting for. Um, the water's all frozen over. This shows the kind of problem that Russia has with warm water ports. It needs warm water ports. They're all frozen. Uh, these ports, no access to them. They're still tied up in Sweden, but, you know, maybe they think they can move against us at the same time. Uh, that said, there's no declaration of war, and Russian forces have made an appearance before uh, on the border. So, just Austria for the time being. Okay, we're going to continue to play it safe, I think. We'll, I'll probably leave it there, uh, so that's January to March. Um, but yeah, what a beginning to the, the decade, huh? Uh, we're at war again, and it, it, this feels like it's going to be a much, much more considerable kind of uh, war, actually. A much more serious challenge. Austria is also at war in Italy, but they are, they've comfortably steamrolled through Italy. You know, absolutely no problems at all. Also, the Austrian army, I think, um, is significantly larger than it was, for sure. So, we just have to kind of bring all our forces to bear. Um, I think we're going to possibly soon have to release funds from scientific research, really just to kind of tap into our manpower to massively expand uh, our army, or maybe even build another two field commands, so that, that would be a struggle, to be fair. But... We'll continue raising another field command for the time being, Constantinople, and we'll bring the Eastern Command entirely uh, to the West, I think. Um, so five days away from there. Seven days away by Rao from Ezra. Yeah, it's going to be a fight, this one. This this could be the, the, the most significant challenge that we've faced so far, based on kind of early assessments of Austrian moves, the forces they seem to have brought to bear. Um... Yeah, the Austrian army is a, a, a much larger than it was, I think. Um, yeah, so yeah, uh, we'll leave it there. Uh, next video will pick up then. I'll probably pass turn to the next video I'll pick up in late March. Uh, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.